oversized, some of our oversized art books and some of our illustrated books are out, are here in these files. And then the prints begin actually in these boxes. Every great institution that is about things, as opposed to performance, needs to have collections. Collections distinguish the great libraries from the second tier. It's a jewel within a jewel. The Special Collections Division of the Newark Public Library contains over 24,000 fine prints, from the classic to the contemporary, and everything in between. The division is both the anchor of Newark's thriving arts community and the cornerstone of the city's civic renaissance. The story of the Special Collections is the story of two remarkable men, John Cotton Dana and William J. Dane. The idea of a public library where everybody had access to uh, really didn't start to form in this country until the 1850s. The concept of a free public library where you didn't have to pay to get in or to take a book out was a sort of a radical thing. In Newark, that gained momentum and really took shape and so by 1889 there was a referendum in the city of Newark and the Newark Public Library was established. The special collections go back very early in the history of this library and they really are tied to the second director who was uh, uh, a great man, John Cotton Dana, who had a real love affair with uh, the printed word but more broadly with, with anything printed, anything visual. John Cotton Dana, sometimes called the father of the American library system, became the director of the Newark Public Library in 1902. A visionary iconoclast, Dana believed libraries should be accessible to everyone. I think why Dana was so radical was that he really just, he believed in access. He didn't believe that libraries or museums, because he was a librarian first and a museum director sort of by accident in a sense, but he believed that these places should be accessible, that everybody should be able to walk in and get something. Dana wanted the library to serve as an educational center for the entire community and considered visual art a vital component of this mission. His keen interest in public service and passion for printed materials combined in a collection of illustrations and fine prints on which he worked until his death in 1929. Today, the special collections boast tens of thousands of printed works of art, from posters, to artist books, and even shopping bags. Dana's legacy and its place in the community lives on, thanks to the tireless efforts of one of Newark's other treasures. What drove the artist community's relationship to the library was one singular personality, and that is uh, my dear friend, my beloved friend, and supporter of Algyra, and keeper of the prints, William Dane. Bill Dane, the keeper of the prints, came to the Newark Public Library in 1947. He's just an amazing figure in, in Newark, an amazing person, you know, so approachable, but has established this huge, you know, legacy of this collection. There is a lot of Bill Dane in that collection as having been its sort of uh, its curatorial vision for decades. I came in 1947 and uh, Newark of course as America and the world was a whole different situation. It's interesting as Newark was being undermined by race and racism and classism 
The special collection was this kind of paragon of diversity. His forays into the Caribbean and Latin America has helped strengthen that collection. And I think in that sense he's been a trendsetter because it, he really takes what we can call a transnationalist perspective to collecting. You can read this collection of prints as text or a kind of encyclopedia that will tell you stories about the history of the city, about the history of its peoples. He has continued to add to the collection, to make selections that, that reflect what is happening in the current um, uh, environment, the current uh, art world, and he's kept it alive. What enabled Newark to leap into this Renaissance city as a credible metaphor for what it was becoming was the special collections. All through these years from 1889, through two world wars to the world's greatest depression of the 1930s, the citizens of Newark and the city officials have seen to it that the library is part of civic life. You know, Newark is basically the heart, the cultural heart in some ways of the state. Um, there are other cities that can boast other things, but Newark really has this, probably the strongest constellation of cultural organizations with New Jersey Back and WGBO and, and uh, historical societies. Right here on Broad Street, we've got the Algyra Gallery, and further down on Crawford Street, we've got the City Without Walls, and the gallery here at Rutgers, and a wonderful Newark Museum, which is, uh, well, it's about the best there is. <laughs> the special collections of the Newark Public Library is a testament to the groundbreaking work of John Cotton Dana and the incomparable foresight of Bill Dane. It is thanks to these remarkable men of the Newark community that there will always be art for all.